In this video, I'm showing you step by step how to use this great free tool called Google Tasks. So let's crack on. So first things first, where do you actually find Google Tasks? The first thing to do is log into your Google account. Go to Gmail, Google Calendar or Google Drive and the sidebar on the right hand side here is where Google Tasks is located. So if you hover over each one, you'll, it will tell you what they each do. So you have the calendar, the keep, and the blue circle with the tick in the middle is tasks. So if you click onto there, it will open up your Google taskbar. As you can see, I have no tasks here at this moment. There are several ways to add a task to your taskbar. The first way is using the taskbar itself. And all you would need to do is click add a task, give it a title, add in any of the relevant details and then give it a due date and time of when you want the task to be completed. So to do that, click on date and time, choose a date, set the time and then click OK. So you can see here it tells you the due date and the time. Click back into the title and then click return and it will automatically add your next task for you to start putting in the details. The second way of adding a task is using Gmail itself. So if you have an email that you want to create a task from, then what you can do is just click and drag the email over. By default, it will take the subject line of the email and put that as the title of the task. So you will probably want to change that to overwrite it. And all you need to do is just highlight it and then just overwrite it. And again, add in any more details and put a date and time. You can see in Gmail, it doesn't actually affect the email itself. So the email is still there. It's just, it's just brought it over and copied it to the taskbar. If you're actually within an email itself and you want to add this to task, then all you need to do is click on the little tick circle at the top here, add to tasks. And again, click on there and it will, again, it will automatically add this to the taskbar. Another quick way is to press the keyboard shortcut Shift and T. And again, that will automatically add it to the taskbar. The final way of adding them with Gmail is if you wanted to add multiple emails, then you could select the emails you want to move over. And again, you can use the keyboard shortcut Shift and T and it will add all of those. The three emails here will be added as tasks. Once you've actually selected the emails you want to add as tasks, again, you could go to the icon at the top here, add to tasks, and it would do the same thing. Or you can click and drag all three and all three of them will then be added to your tasks. And the great thing is when using a Gmail one, it automatically includes the link to the actual email itself. So if the task was set a while ago and you can't remember what it's about, if you click on the actual um, link in the task itself, click on there and it will open up the actual email. It's a real handy feature. So once you've created a parent task, you might want to add a subtask to this. So to do that, say we want to add a subtask to this Google Tips video one here, click on the three dots over on the right hand side and choose add a subtask. And then you can just add in a quick um, subtask heading, put in the details, and put in a, another time and date. Click out of it, so you have the parent task and then the subtask here. You can mark the subtasks as completed once you're done, just tick on the uh, mark complete box here. And if you want to actually change the subtask to an actual main task, then all you would need to do is click and drag and it will drag it down into an actual parent task itself. So some tasks that you create, you will be doing on a weekly or daily basis and you can actually create repeating tasks for these. So what you would need to do if you add in a task, if you click into your date and time and select the date and the time, and then if you click repeat at the bottom, you can then repeat that on a daily, weekly, monthly, or annual basis. I'm just gonna put in a week and then choose a specific day that you want it to repeat on and the time and click OK. This will now change to tell you that it's repeating weekly on a Monday at 10.30. When you actually complete the task, it won't remove all of the repeated tasks. It just removes the completed task for that particular day, not the ones that are set for future. To stop repeating the task, click on the date and time for that particular task. There's a little cross over on the right hand side. If you click on there, 
and it will say to remove, do you want to remove all future occurrences to stop repeating? And you would just click stop repeating and then it would um, remove them all. To actually delete the repeating task completely, if you just hover over the actual title for the task, click on the three dots on the right hand side and press delete. And that will delete all past and future occurrences. So that's a brief look at tasks. We're now going to talk about lists. So Google by default will give you a list that is automatically called My Tasks. If you click on the little drop down arrow next to that, there's no other list there. It's just My Tasks. If you want to give, your, give it a different name, what you would need to do is next to where it says Add a Task, click on the three dots on the right hand side and choose Rename List and click Done. If you want to add a new list completely, click on the drop down arrow next to the list name and click Create New List. You then give the list a new name and it will automatically open that new list for you. To swap back into the other list, click on the little drop down arrow and choose the other list. So if you have a specific task that you want to move, you click on the three dots next to the task name and you can then see a list of all the list names at the bottom here. And you can just select which list you want it to move it to or you can click new list this way and again it will ask you to create a new list name. Once, you, once you've created that and clicked done, that task will then move straight into that new list. So if I want to move this, this task here to the other list, click on the three dots next to the task name and I'm going to choose work tasks. And that will now automatically be moved to work tasks. To delete the actual list itself, if you click on the three dots next to add a task and there is a, an option called delete list, it's not letting me do it to this one because this was the default list that was called my tasks that Google automatically gives you to begin with. It won't let you delete the default list, so I can't delete this one. But if we go to the next list, work tasks, click on the three dots and I'm going to go to delete list and it will say that all tasks in this list will be permanently removed if you delete this and just click delete. So I've just quickly added a few more tasks in here just to show you. The next thing I want to do is organize these tasks. So to reorder the, the tasks, it's really easy. All you need to do is just click and drag to where you want the task to go. It's up to you how you want to prioritize the tasks. Another way of quickly reorganizing them is to click on the three dots next to add a task and you can sort by my order or by date. So if you click on date, this will sort it by the due date. So the earliest is first, which is quite handy. Or you can sort by my order, which will basically put it back into the order that you sorted it by. So to complete a task, what you would need to do is just tick the circle to the left of each task. And you will see at the bottom, it says task completed. You have a quick undo button, um, but you'll also see at the bottom here, you now have a completed task folder. And if you click on the little arrow on the, on the right hand side, that will expand the list of completed tasks. And if you hover over the task, you'll have the, the bin, the trash can over on the right hand side with, to delete the task completely. Or if you can click back on the tick over on the left and that will mark it back as incomplete and it will reappear in the same list that it was originally in. Moving on to the Google Calendar, I'm just gonna close this taskbar here and I'm gonna go to my Google Calendar. So all tasks by default will automatically get added to your Google Calendar. If you can't see them in your calendar, then go over to the left hand side and under my calendars, make sure that the tasks box is ticked. So another way to quickly add a task is to do the same as you would do an event. So if you quickly click into a date and time and instead of adding an event, click on task, quickly add in a task. You've already got the date and time because you've selected within that date anyway. And you can select the list that you want it to go to here. We've only got one list at the moment, so that's fine. And click save. Any changes that you make within the calendar here for tasks will automatically update across Google. So if you go back into your taskbar in Gmail, you will now see there is a new task update video today at two o'clock, which is what we've just added here in the calendar. Tasks with no time set will appear as an all day task at, at the top of the page for that particular day. You can access the taskbar here as well over on the right hand side and you can edit within the actual calendar. So the one we've got here for this afternoon, if you click once into there, you have the option to edit it, you can delete it 
and you can mark it as complete as well. And remember, any changes you make here automatically get changed across the board. Another real handy feature as well, if, you, if we just quickly add a task and put in, so I've got a task here, no date for this one. If you have a task in your taskbar where no particular date has been set for it, you can actually click and drag it to a specific day and time in your calendar and it will automatically assign the date and time in your taskbar. So if I go back into your Gmail and you can see now, this now says today 4 p.m. I like that, it is pretty cool. The final thing I want to show you in Google Calendar is the color coding. So to change the color of your tasks, go across to the left-hand side where it says tasks under my calendars, click on the three dots on the right-hand side and you can change the color in here. If you want to add your own color, then click on the little plus sign at the bottom here to add a custom color. So you can put in your own branding colors, your hex codes and everything in here. And the final thing I want to show you on Google Tasks is with reference to keyboard shortcuts. So I've already mentioned that Shift and T quickly adds emails to, as a task. But what about other keyboard shortcuts? Well, if you're in your taskbar, if you press Control and forward slash, this will bring up a full list of keyboard shortcuts that you can use within Google Tasks itself. So you can choose which ones are gonna be helpful to you personally. So as you've seen, Google Tasks doesn't have all the bells and whistles that other task management systems have. But if you're using Google Workspace on a daily basis and are just wanting something to help keep you on track of things, then I don't think you can go too far wrong with Google Tasks. What about you? Will you give Google Tasks a try? Let me know in the comments if you, if you already use this or if you plan to use it in the future. I'd love to know what you think. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.